Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Board of Directors of Community Television of Santa Cruz County regular meeting of September 23rd, 2019. Would the Secretary kindly call the roll? Yes. Uh, Chair Mazier? Here. Director Hall? Here. Director Rand? Here. Director Mannheim? Here. Director Laurent? Here. Director O'Driscoll? Here. Director Owen? Director Lanier? Here. All right. Thank you very much. I note that we do have a quorum. So we can move on to item number two, which is oral communications. Uh, is there anybody who'd like to uh, address the board? All right, seeing none, we can move on to item number three, con uh, consideration of late additions to the agenda. Uh, any ad additions or deletions? Anything that uh, last minute that we need to add to the agenda or poll? All right, seeing none, we can move on to our consent agenda, which is uh, only one item this month. It's to approve the minutes of our last meeting from July 22nd. Do we have any motions uh, uh, on the consent agenda? Yes, um, and since it's the only item on the consent agenda, I don't know if we have to pull it, but I do have a correction to make. Okay. Um, it noted on um, that this is the meeting of June 24th, the purchase from Elemental Technologies. We had amended the uh, amount that we were approving to be 30000 not to exceed 30,000 and the not to exceed got left off. So if we can just add that to the minutes, then I'd move approval. Okay, did I get the date wrong? Did I get the date wrong on that? Did we not have a meeting in July? We did not have a meeting in August. In August, that's right. But yes. I will change the date on the, uh, the minutes as oh, well. Oh, the mid, okay. the, mid, so the mid date of the minutes? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I was wondering. So the date on the minutes, so we have um, Two a motion and a second by, uh, motion by Director Mannheim, second by Vice Chair um, Rand, um, to approve the uh, consent agenda with the um, stated uh, corrections. Um, any further comment? I'll call the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that carries unanimously. All right, now we get to move on to the regular agenda, and uh, item number five um, is the election of a new board member um, to the seat expiring November 2022. And this uh, seat is reserved for K through 12 education. And our um, candidate before us is Ms. Elizabeth Spenson, who works for the County Office of Education. I have a brief uh, introduction I will read. Um, Elizabeth Spenson is a California native who enjoys living in the majestic redwoods of the Santa Cruz Mountains. She holds a bachelor's degree from the University of Redlands, a master's degree in tech, uh, teaching from Fresno State University, and a multiple subject teaching credential from California State University, Monterey Bay. She has taught all grades K through 12 in public schools in Watsonville and Santa Cruz. She currently teaches at-risk high school youth in alternative education with the Santa Cruz County Office of Education. Elizabeth has a passionate heart for social justice and conservation and structures her classes and curriculum with a lens encompassing science, literature, multicultural history, and perspectives and sustainability. So um, she comes highly recommended by our, our former board member, uh, Isaac Gonzalez, and I've spoken with her and uh, find her to be, um, as described, uh, an excellent <laughs> candidate. Um, do we have any, uh, do you have a motion to uh, elect Ms. Svensson to the uh, Board of Community I, Television. I'd like to make a motion. I, okay. I'd like another fellow educator with, among some of our educators on here. So yeah, I, uh, I would like to uh, make a motion to uh, elect, to approve Elizabeth uh, Svensson to the board. I second that. All right, we have a, a motion and a second. Any further discussions, questions, comments from the board? All right, seeing none, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that carries unanimously. Uh, please come join us. anything else for you to, to vote on today, but you can uh, <laughs> welcome welcome to the table. You got um, to officially hear the executive director's report. Officially, yes, as, as a board as a board member, and ask any questions that you like. Um, so we can move on to item number six now, which is the oral report of our executive director. Back up, please oh, take I it away. I'm just typing down the correct spelling of Elizabeth's last name. Uh oh. Okay. 
<laughs> Did you pronounce it Svensson or Swenson? It's Svensson. Svensson. Okay, just like it's called. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, this is a. Uh, this is the report for August. And um, uh, I always start, uh, start off with administration and financial is always at the top of the list. And so we, the co-working center was in profit for August and on a pace to be in profit for September. But um, <laughs> we had a bit of a mix up, not we didn't, uh, our software vendor made some adjustments during the working day during the first week of the month when we charge everyone. <laughs> and that caused a huge problem. There was a week of August when no transactions that we had entered and looked as though they were processed were actually processed. Mm. So we discovered this on our own <laughs> and then tracked back. And now we're involved with the programmers who are in another country in another time zone. So we think we have figured it out between Mel and Ian and the, the programmers. We found all the money. Um, we've gotten $2,000 of it processed and we're working on the tail end of it. So I say we were in profit. <laughs> I, I believe so, based on the amount of the unprocessed charges. Um, in September, if um, those of you who can look at the dashboard will see that we have lots of extra money, it's because we processed the, act, the mm -hmm. missing money mm -hmm. this month. So mm -hmm. there'll be a weirdness there. So don't get excited. Don't, do, yeah, no <laughs> confetti. <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, it's all kind of come out in the wash and it'll be pretty even. And, uh, but we, we have uh, rented an office and stuff in September, so we will be up, but not that much. And so just so you know, in the interest of clarity, um, I just wanted to let you know that. I don't, it's not a problem in the end, it's just a weird thing that we're dealing with, but you should know. Um, we did about 15 meetings in uh, June, which, um, no, that's wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> we did 15 meetings in July, and that's kind of average for us, so that's right on the money. Um, we hired uh, a new government technician and we are interviewing for one more. We like to have just, an, uh, just enough. We have a fine balance between having enough to cover everything in any eventuality and not having so many that some people don't get work, so mm. they forget what they're doing. Mm. So we want to get them enough meetings, but we want to be covered in case someone gets sick. We can't have just enough, so it's a, it's a balance that Victor walks and he handles it really well. He's looking at one more person right now. Under equipment and facilities, we, no wood to knock on, <laughs> but we should get the internet by the end of the month, of the fiber, <coughs> anyway. Uh, we've seen an actual human came in the building and looked at things and asked us questions. So <laughs> we feel that, and that's a, been going on, I mean, we started a year ago. We started last September, wow. and mm -hmm. they told us three months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're pretty excited now. So hopefully that happens, and um, we were concerned. You may have seen some emails uh, back and forth about whether or not that would disrupt our being able to see our own channel in the building, and it's actually two separate things, not to worry. We can still see our channels, and this is where we monitor them, so because all of our equipment is based in the county building, so we can't really, without cable, we can't see. We're on the air. So we have that feed for that purpose and uh, that will continue. And uh, we have um, received the new elemental, the big $20,000 piece of equipment or $30,000 piece of equipment you guys approved. And um, it's uh, going to be in, uh, Victor's going to install it this month. There was not a need to install it right away. We just need to buy it because we got that huge 50% <laughs> discount. So it's been sitting in our office. It's as big as this table. Oh. So we're very anxious to get it installed. Um, under communication, uh, we, we're still doing, uh, Ian Berry, our community coordinator, is doing a great job with First Fridays. He always gets an artist. And we have real interesting art out there today when you come in or go out, take a peek at it. And um, he's been doing that every Friday. And in, in conjunction with that, we uh, launched an oral history project for the earthquake. It's the 30th anniversary of Loma Prieta. And uh, so we joined with the Santa Cruz County Library System and KSQD in recording oral histories of that event. So we're letting people come in 
tell us what they experienced, mm -hmm. and we uh, will put some of them on television in October for quick preparedness month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we'll also um, uh, give them to the library for storage forever for a part of the, um, just as oral histories of that event. And we've gotten some great stories. Um, people are making appointments, and you can make an appointment now. We do it every day. You can call up and make an appointment with Ian to come in and do it. We've been doing it in the RSVP studio, so that's been pretty cool. And uh, we've had a lot of people come in. We did a whole bunch of them on first Friday, and then we've, I think we've done eight since then, oh. so quite a few. How are you reaching out to people? How are they, how are well, they learning about it? Uh, there's an advertisement on the radio, mm -hmm. and uh, we've emailed everybody on our list. Um, the library is sharing it with um, yeah. with. They have a very extensive marketing program. Yeah, they're, they're good so at this. It's actually, so. on the library website. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so if you put down 30th anniversary in Google earthquake interviews, it pops right up and tells you mm -hmm. who to call. Yeah. They've been connecting um, different organizations, like veterans organizations and other groups, where there okay. might be people with stories. I shared it on Facebook, so all three yeah. of my friends saw it. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 you are getting those little messages. It's quality. It's quality over there. <laughs> I just made an appointment with Ian. Oh, oh, great, oh, great, oh, great, 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 yeah, oh, good. Great. And we should all do it. If you were here during the earthquake, please mm -hmm. come in and. Very and good. Mm -hmm. Record your memories of it. I was in New York worrying about my family here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. having yeah. trouble getting through to them. So Do you know so that is the being displaced and away from the people who are in a tragedy is almost as traumatic as yeah. being yes. in the tragedy. Mm -hmm. It yes. really the is uncertainty. Yeah, yeah the uncertainty. So anyway, um, uh, we're going to do that uh, throughout uh, September. And then they'll start airing in October. Ian and I are going to edit those. Mm. Um, on, on outreach, um, there was a big, well, it's not a big thing. It's kind of a medium-sized thing. Um, ACM, which is the um, Alliance, for Alliance, <laughs> the Alliance for, for Community, community Media. media. <laughs> I hate those anagrams. <laughs> so um, the Alliance for Community Media is sort of our trade organization. They lobby for us, and, and they keep us up on things. And uh, of course, the um, the cable companies, you know, we're not. They don't really support us. They do it because they have to. So they're always trying to undo it, and they're busy trying to undo it right now. Mm -hmm. And so um, the uh, the um, all the Northern California community television stations were invited to a meetup, a, a regional meetup. Not even a meetup. It was like a meetup. It was in one room. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there was like 50 people. And uh, we went to uh, the, the community television station in San Francisco, which is the old Bayback, if you remember Bayback. Bayback kind of consumed the community television station. So we went there, and there were uh, others from Northern California. Apparently, Northern California has the most penetration of community television stations, mm, which is yeah. kind of fun. <laughs> so um, uh, there were a few things. I just want to give you a quick rundown of what happened in that meeting so you can be apprised, and then I'm going to ask Director ran to help me because she she we had two different breakout sessions mm. and we went so that's how big it was there were two breakout <laughs> sessions mm. and uh, we each went to one of them so um, they did a lot they suggested some best practice strategies it's like to you know to stay important and relevant in your community and all of those strategies are already currently encompassed in our strategic plan. So we were very excited to look up at their PowerPoint and there were all the things we had outlined that we wanted to do. So we are on the right track. Uh, they also, there was a big suggestion, a big push to let your local government know about this, this thing that's happening now is what they call the third order, which is an FCC regulation that they are changing to our disadvantage and um, right now they have changed it there's a lawsuit to stop them and they're requesting no there's not a lawsuit there's an appeal to stop the order to to appeal the decision and then there's a request for a stay so that they don't enact it until the appeal <coughs> if so it's very confusing. That's where we are at the moment. And uh, there are some things, and most things in the new order would not be good. Most of them we already lost through DIVCA. So there was a big overhaul 
in 2014 that took a lot of stuff away from us and this would so we already lost most of these things but <coughs> the two big things at issue would be <laughs> the cable companies would like to be able to deduct as in-kind contributions from the peg fees uh, not from the peg fees but from the franchise fees mm. uh, transporting the cable signal to the head end mm. yeah. and which would yeah, and they and its market value and they're the market, <laughs> so they would be trying to decide on their own what that's worth. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other thing, it, which won't happen yet, it, but it's in the offing, is to charge us in-kind contribution money for the actual channels. Mm -hmm. So this is bad. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's why they're, they're trying to stop they're trying to stop this because it would be bad for our community. It would be bad for, we don't actually get franchise fees, community television doesn't, but the county does. That and that's goes huge. To yeah. Provide county services. Yeah. And that's yes. how we get, yeah. So that's because they're using the people's easements and, you know, that's the people who are supposed to get something and now they want to deduct the cost of it. Anyway, mm. uh, there's a big pushback on this. So that's what's happening they've asked us to let our government know our local government sometimes local governments don't know our local government is all over it so we already have um, this both the city and the county have people who are really keeping track of this and they have helped to inform us so we're good in that respect we also though there are um, a number of levels of government and you know the FCC is at the federal level so it's not only our local level but it's also our state level and our federal level so we need to write to our senators and our representatives and we have done that and uh, the, the Board of Soups has and I believe the City Council has written letters also and um, uh, Anna Eshoo wrote a letter for us and so we want to keep talking to those people about the value of community television and make sure that they are aware. Um, I, in Santa Cruz, they are very aware. Um, I also run the station in Gilroy where they had a clue. So it just depends on what community you're working with, if they're on it, if they they value community television and, and know, know so a lot of them value it but don't know how it occurs. Mm -hmm. So this they don't realize where the money comes for it mm -hmm. or they think it's just a nonprofit that raises its own funds and so there is some confusion. But not here. We're good here. But we do want to make sure that we keep bugging all the levels. So in order to help to do that, um, at this meetup uh, we formed a coalition, kind of a loose coalition, um, so that we could approach these uh, bodies in a group. So instead of it's just Becca Reed coming to try to talk to the senator, <laughs> it's like the, um, it's the Northern California Association of Community Media coming to approach. And so that's how we're trying to be more powerful as a group. And so that is, um, they're building a website, so we have a place. And the idea is, they asked an interesting question, like, what do you want? So if we were going to lobby these guys, what would it be for? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what we're working on next is the talking points. What kinds of things do we want to impress on them? And uh, like, what do we do? And, and you know, all the kind of job skill training things that we do and the, the reporting, the, the documentation of community events and, and um, not just events, but, you know, activities and news, basically. Uh, current events more, not news. Tom? Yeah. <laughs> you had you a, can tell my question. You I had, had a, a, yeah. you had a so question face. So are they asking what we as community television would want changed if that yeah. if the order gets altered? No matter what. They figure that we should not be on the defensive. Mm. We should be on the offensive. Mm. What do we want? Rather than how do we stop what they're doing, how do we... We want our FET PEG fees to be unrestricted. Restricted. That was what I said. We want that money to be unrestricted. Right. That's what we want. Yeah. And um, so that's uh, high on the list. There are other things that other people want, but that's the main thing. That's the restrictive thing. That's the thing that they do. So we have, we used to have, we used to get our funding in a chunk and we just funded the station with it. It ran the station. But then they were able to go in the co in 22 states, the cable companies were able to make a change in the regulation so that the money that they give us can only be used for facilities and equipment, not people or pencils or water and gas or internet service or any of those things. So the goal clearly was to put us out of business, but um, we weren't ready to go. Mm -hmm. So we've developed all these alternative revenue <laughs> streams and done all kinds of things to hang in 
And um, if we just had that, we get all that money that we used to get, we still get, but we can't use it for people anymore. So it only can be used for equipment in the building. And we've leveraged that to some extent, which you know, we can talk later about. I can give you the history, but uh, what we really want is to just have the money and to run the station. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's hard to do without people. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, what else did we... Um, um, nobody really, so on these in-kind contributions, nobody knows how that will be implemented. There's no talk of what it would be, it's just a vague thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the um, associ uh, what is it, the uh, Alliance, Alliance of Community Media <laughs> does not, um, <laughs> I should just write the thing out, I don't know why I put the anagram in here. Uh, they don't think that's legal, they don't think it's consistent with the law because the law says franchise changes must be negotiated. Mm -hmm. So there's a little there, mm, and so hopefully, I'm sure that's the leverage they're using to appeal. Mm -hmm. But so so keep that in mind, um, and uh, that's that's it. That was my outreach for this month, okay. and um, and that's my report for okay. for August. So I, I did have one other just comment. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really like to express thanks to both Ian and um, Mel for tracking down oh, what yeah. happened. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was a big mess and it happened, the, it was huge. as I understand it, the week or the five days whenever, when they yeah. were doing this, like the, the four the hours, of August. happened to be the time when we put all of our, we charge um, everybody. All, all of our stuff <laughs> uh, normally yeah. goes through. So it, it was a huge yeah. impact on our revenues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was giant. We have, what we do is every month on the 28th day of the month, we charge everyone's credit cards because that's how we do the, the co-working. Um, and so we charge everybody. So on the first it goes through. So from the first to the seventh, no transactions were processed. So that's like, you know, 50% of our money. It's mm, <laughs> yeah. a lot. It so was a huge Kudos, deal. and nobody could figure out why. It looked and like it looked like it through. was there. Like so we look and it said processed. So, so big, big kudos to both. Yeah, of them. they were great. They were geniuses mm -hmm. and they tracked it back and it took a couple of days. It took oh. a lot of our time mm. actually to find this money. And so I'll be working on that. And but we have policies and procedures in place now to, to, ver you know, to well, not really. try to avoid this <laughs> happening again now. <laughs> well, we. We have complaints in place. <laughs> we don't, um, we subscribe pretty much to the software. So we don't have any power over it. Right. And so we complain. Well, and the finance committee, didn't you say something about uh, we're going to check the bank account? The oh, we have that. We'll, yes, we'll yes. check the bank yeah. to make well, sure it reconciles with that. That's how they found right. out. Right. Yeah, after fact. yeah, yeah. We, we usually check the, we re Mel reconciles the bank account once a month. She goes through and makes sure. And we have this one report that's accurate that we always know is right. And we can control, we can contrast that with the bank account and see everything matches up. Mm -hmm. And usually everything matches up. But this time when she did it, it didn't match up. There was all this missing money. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mel's going to look once a week now okay. because um, so we'll, if it happens so again we'll catch it more quickly yeah. perhaps yes yeah okay. because now it's been a month and we have to tell people you know we didn't charge you last mm, month no. and we're now going to charge you twice. twice it's a little embarrassing <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's uncomfortable for them because right. if sure. they don't I mean, plan ahead right. they're not watching it real closely they might think they have tons of money and right. they've right. got really they don't so mm. it's a bad thing it's right. really <coughs> makes us look really <coughs> organized. Right. Once, once a week sounds much better. Um, I have one other question. So uh, the, the new um, lobbying or, uh, organization, uh, was there, an, uh, besides forming it, is there a next step in terms of when is that group going to meet again s soon? Is there a calendar? Not uh, yet. They're, okay. they're organizing right. the group. Okay. So they're, put, they're finding a place online where people can meet and they haven't decided whether it should be a forum or a call or okay. what. So it's still they're orga organizing. Still organizing. And if, and if I could clarify, ACM is not really a lobbying organization. Well, no, but there was a new there was a new um, committee the, or the, oh, the new committee. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, it it's a trade organization. Yeah, I would right. say yeah. they do some lobbying. Right. Yes, and they watch they, out for us. Yes, but there was a new do. body that was formed of consisting yeah. of members of right. ACM. Yeah, yeah, that will lobby people. Right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, not in the traditional sense, <laughs> but right. but we'll go talk to them. Great. Well, thanks, Becca. Yeah, and yeah. I believe we wanted to hear a little bit from Vice Chair Rand from yep. her, her yeah. uh, separate breakout session. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you for the great uh, summary. I went to a different breakout session, which basically dealt with PEG uh, operational challenges. And it was interesting that the first person that spoke up, uh, he, um, he wanted us to talk about diversity. 
and of course that's a huge topic but it all through that hour hour and a half that we talked it came in and out and it was actually a great theme for for our conversation and so some people said you know we are working on the um, the basis of first come first serve and that doesn't work we need to we need to reach out to specific organizations. And that's why, you know, I think, oh, youth grant, youth grant, yeah, youth yeah, grant. Yeah. And yeah. that's in our strategic plan, other kinds of outreach yeah. as well. Yeah. And so uh, it, was, it was very good for me to see that reinforced with questions from, from all the other stations. So, uh, so another thing was the, um, the statement from someone who said, throw away your perception of what people want. Tell them we have tools. What do you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I know in our strategic plan, we are, you know, reaching out to the community, mm -hmm. training people yeah. and all that. So they can training. then, yeah. yeah. So it was very strong, and I, I really uh, took out some of those things. Um, they all said we need new producers and higher quality of content. Mm -hmm. And we have talked about that as well. And um, the, um, we, we talked about, uh, you know, using, engaging the best practices, and so there were a couple of uh, items that people talked about. Empower staff, yeah. and I know, you know, you work very hard on that. Um, you know, get local college media departments to showcase their, mm -hmm. their media on, on our stations. Mm -hmm. You know, all kinds of things that we talked about. Um, you know, we need to build capacity. You know, more classes. And they talked about increase the rate, get advanced classes and we've been talking about that we've never talked about increasing the rate <laughs> the, the, frequen <laughs> the, the frequency of classes or how, uh, what, what you Cost. charge for classes what would you charge oh, okay. we charge like our classes are less than ten dollars <coughs> yeah Way well the the field camera class is the one that's four hours and we charge twenty four dollars oh okay the audio i thought we class. charged eight dollars for that for uh, some reason no 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 <laughs> the, the studio camera <laughs> class is eight dollars it's still an amazing value <laughs> yeah it is yeah. absolutely and then reach out to specific groups. It came up several times. Now they were mentioning that the equipment rental is going down because Not people us. people have their own equipment. Well, so you know the difference. May I? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I asked you to speak, and I'm interrupting you. Mm -hmm. um, the difference between here, Santa Cruz, and other places is we have a lot of producers in town mm -hmm. who make their living doing that and want the good equipment, but can't don't have can't enough business it. to buy it. Yeah. In Gilroy, we could never make any money with <laughs> more equipment, yeah. but here we do. We have the good stuff, and we have. And we've been very careful to buy things <laughs> that people won't be able to buy themselves, like a crane or a dolly or right. that sort of thing. Or yeah. store even. And or yeah, but, exactly. I, but yeah. I assume at their community sta TV stations, they yeah. don't have. Well, not everybody has that. There's the not like business for yeah. producers in every town. Mm -hmm. So they were thinking, you know, and we can do that at the same time. But they were thinking of uh, doing, you know, online learning. Yeah. And they're even thinking about doing it with a system where people then pay. And so it, it was interesting. People yeah. were thinking money uh, for for operations as well and digital marketing. And um, they also said that there's money available for people who need to digitally market themselves so that we could train people to then help people to digitally market themselves. And I thought, well, that's mm -hmm. something we hadn't thought about yet. Mm -hmm. So there were, there were things of, um, and then there were questions like this one woman, this poor woman, she's the ED for a TV station. She has no access to the budget. Mm. That's unbelievable. So we're all just m commiserating with her because how can you as ED lead, you know, the the, the station and not know what to <laughs> <laughs> do you know if you can buy any equipment? Mm. Yeah. I, it was it was fascinating. So we're all there was a very supportive mm. group. It was a small room and there were like 30, 35 people sitting in that room mm. and there some you know these are come some of the the, the things that you know, yeah. I think pertain to us. But we were commiserating with this poor woman. Mm. It was amazing. Mm. So I think, I came away and I, th you know, we had the, the, the privilege of being in the same car going back and forth. So we, we had a lot to talk about. Mm. And then we came away with, you know, our strategic plan is doing that and that and that and that. So we felt really good about having done the yeah. strategic plan. And of course, we're going to talk about the implementation of the strategic plan. And then some of the things I've been thinking about on 
you know, what to do next. Mm -hmm. But there were a couple of ideas, mm -hmm. I think, that we need to explore yeah. as well. So mm -hmm. great, great day yeah. and um, great company. Oh, uh -huh. thanks. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you both very much for that um, illuminating report. And it sounds like it's been an eventful couple of months while uh, the board has been off. Um, <laughs> any, any further <laughs> questions, on your laurels? comments? <laughs> Well, you know, since we're live in terms of educating the public, we always at the very end talk about how this is broadcast and thank the volunteers. We should probably mention that people who are watching it now are watching a production by volunteers. Right. Absolutely. So just as a thought, yes. rather than at the end, talk about it at the middle for one time. Mm -hmm. yes, thank and, you. And, that, and that they good. went through a lot of classes <laughs> that we did and that yeah. they themselves in turn are teaching other people. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, yeah, just a thought. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, um, well, you just finished talking, and uh, the next item on our agenda is item seven, the oral report uh, from the Volunteer Advisory Committee. Well, it's uh, actually a great segue because uh, the, there we have a subgroup from the producers and directors who have looked, previously they knew that we were working on a strategic plan, and so they came up with their strategic vision for specifically the public access. And, and after uh, we finished the strategic plan, the strategic plan, they studied it and then adjusted some of their uh, suggestions for uh, public access. So we met this Saturday in preparation of our retreat on the implementation. So uh, they have quite a number of uh, um, ways of implementing certain, certain aspects. And we all know that Keith wrote this very specific thing in our strategic plan already. And so it kind of mashes very nicely together. Other things are specifically for public access, so we, we will bring it up and see how much is actually going to be in, in our report. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's, there's plenty to, uh, to work with, so we were very pleased. And we'll hear about that at our retreat. Yeah, what I, what I should do is um, probably send you the vision. I have to ask if that's okay. Uh, the vision, and we already put, you know, yes, no, or this, you know, situation, or this needs to happen first. So we made all kinds of comments on, oh. on it. So oh, excellent. I'll uh, talk it over with Linda, who is the uh, one of the members of that group, to see if I can share their vision with our comments. Okay. Well, yeah. if it's approved, I look forward to seeing that. Yeah. Great. Um, so we can move on to item number eight, which is the oral report of the board chair, uh, would be me. And um, let's see, aside from setting up a meeting with our um, finance committee and executive director and vice chair with the county, which was a, a nice productive meeting, and first time we'd had one of those in a while, mm -hmm. whereas I understand they used to be monthly or no. quor quarterly? Oh, well, well, crisis driven. Yeah, yeah. crisis driven. <laughs> right. yeah. And uh, we were in a crisis for quite a long time. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was yeah. good to get together and reacquaint um, with the leadership over our counterparts over at the county. Um, but aside from that, I was uh, trying to recharge my batteries and, mm -hmm. and um, up in the wilderness of Oregon for one week. And nice. uh, so, uh, but it's great to be back and I'm looking forward to uh, our next year of trying to uh, keep the place going and <laughs> even uh, with our upcoming retreat, uh, take our vision and find practical ways to uh, implement it and bring the organization forward. So that's about it for me. Mention when we have to be uh, okay, this would be a good time. Um, yes, so uh, the board will be meeting on Saturday, Saturday October 5th. Um, and 12, to 12 to 2. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have a vice chair. Um, um, so, yeah, and, and we'll be working on implementing our uh, strategic plan, which was uh, devised by our um, hardworking committee. and. Um, coming up with some concrete uh, ways to make it reality. I just wanted to check on the time. Is it 11? I had 11 to 2. No, is it's it 12 to 2. It is? I'll check my calendar. Okay. And I'll give you the final verdict. My calendar Two hours. Is, is Did it? you say 11 to 2? Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Okay. Yeah, three <laughs> hours. <laughs> Thank you. That's thirty. That's thirty-three percent more time. Just, yeah. Check it. Just look at this. It looks like an eleven and twelve. Okay. Okay. Eleven to two. Eleven to two. Eleven to two. Three hours to figure it all. Out. Figure it all out. <laughs> so everybody Piece drink lots of coffee that morning and um, come prepared to to brainstorm. 
Um, yes, okay, so we can, um, if there's no further comments, questions, um, we can move on to item number nine. Board member staff requests for specific items to appear on next meeting agenda. Are there any specific items that anybody would like to bring? Seeing none, we can move right along to announcements. We've mentioned the board retreat, which is Saturday, October 5th, 11 to two. Um, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank our volunteer crew, which today consists of Phil Harmonic. Congratulations on uh, another anniversary of your marriage and many more. Um, Nick Kirkendall, Sherry Ross, Linda Janakis, Keith Gudger, and Karen Scott. Thank you very much to our, our uh, fear fearless crew. Um, we can move on now to item 11, which is um, adjournment. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Would our newest member like to second? I would like to second the motion. <laughs> All right. We have a motion and a second for adjournment. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We are adjourned until our next meeting. Thank you very much. Oh, you're bureaucratic.